Hello, uh, welcome to introduction to Java programming. In this session, we will discuss synchronization in Java. So that is synchronization in multi-threaded environment. And we also discuss synchronized keyword. Let's begin. So what is synchronization in Java? Or what is generally the concept of synchronization? So it's actually there uh, in operating system where we are discussing about uh, process synchronization. It also comes in databases whenever we are doing certain transaction management. What is synchronization? Synchronization simply said to ensure some order. Synchronization means in a sync actually. So when I'm speaking, you have to listen. When you are speaking, I have to listen. So we should be in a sync. Right, a synchronization basically ensuring of order. So here we are discussing synchronization in the context of multi-threading. So synchronization in Java refers to ensuring order of thread execution. So by having synchronization, we can control the access of threads to a shared resource. You have a resource and multiple threads, multiple threads are trying to access that. And now you need to control the order. After this one, the other has to get executed. After this one, some other thread has to get executed. Like that, we need to control the order. So the capability of controlling the access of threads to a shared resource is called synchronization. Such that the order of thread execution is achieved and we will have thread safety. We'll have thread safety, that means when a resource is being accessed by a thread, so other threads will not interfere. So this thread finishes its job and other thread will come. And while other thread is executing or acting on this critical resource or whatever the shared resource, remaining threads will wait. So this is actually called thread safety. Okay, so what are the benefits? By having synchronization, we can prevent thread interference and we can ensure consistency. We can ensure consistency. Otherwise, multiple threads are acting at the same time. So one thread reads and one thread writes, you will have different values at different different threads, right? So by having synchronization, we can prevent thread interference such that we can achieve consistency. So in order to do this, in Java, we have a keyword, we have a modifier. Out of the 12 modifiers, we have one modifier that is called synchronized. The synchronized keyword is used to achieve the order. Okay, so how uh, it will happen whenever synchronized keyword is used, uh, internally it implements locking protocol. So whenever you want to access the shared resource, now you have to obtain the lock and you will be acting on it. All other threads waiting for this uh, lock to get released. The lock will get released only when the task is done. And when the lock is released, other thread who obtains the lock will go and all other threads wait, uh, will be waiting for this lock to be released. So that's what actually happened internally. Uh, but just in Java, you need to use a synchronized keyword and all these things will be uh, taken care uh, internally. Okay, so if you, uh, if you see the classical synchronization problems, I can actually name few of them. Classical synchronization problems, we have a readers writers problem. We have a readers writers problem and we have producer consumer problem we have producer consumer problem and then we have something called dining philosophers problem so dining philosophers problem so these are all the classical problems of synchronization so what is reader writer's problem so reader has to read only when the writer has written otherwise if reader goes and want to read nothing will be there so reader has to read, reader has to come when writer is there. So writer writes it, then reader has to read it. So order should be there. So first writer has to come, write, and then reader has to come and read it. If reader comes first and there is nothing, so reader has to starve. Same is the case with producer consumer problem. Producer has to produce first and the consumer should consume so otherwise consumer comes first and there is nothing. So the consumer will starve. 
because when you are there in the critical section, producer cannot come. Right? You obtain the lock, enter the critical section, and there is nothing to consume. The producer cannot come actually. Right? That's why producer has to come first and then consumer. So we need to achieve some order. Same is the case with the dining philosophers problem. So the philosophers who are sitting on the dining table, so few some philosophers should think and some philosophers should eat actually. So that is called dining philosophers problem. So we need to achieve the order. So all these cases, there should be an order. That's nothing but synchronization, right? So in Java, achieving synchronization is so easy. You need not to worry much at all. Just use the synchronized keyword, the problem is solved. But let's understand actually the problem first. So let me actually take you to two examples, two scenarios I have created and let's understand them. Yeah, this is my class table. So this much is my class table. So there is a table class which has a method called print table. What happens here in the print table? We will take a number and we will print that particular mathematical table. I equal to 1, I less than equal to 10, I plus plus and we are printing that mathematical table over here. And any thread that comes over here will have to sleep for 500 milliseconds. So in order to give uniform access to all threads, we, we will be do like this, right? So that's the importance of uh, the sleep method. So this is my business class that is table. In the same class, table.java source file, I have two threads. I have two thread classes. My first thread class is first. Class first extends thread. So now the objects of this first class will be threads. Now, what this first class want to do is it wants to print the table. It wants to print the table. Which table? It wants 19th table. Okay, the first thread fields 19th table is difficult and it wants to print it. So in order to call this print table method, we require an object of table. So we have table T. So an instance of table was taken here. And when this first object is getting constructed, we are constructing with the table reference such that I can use this table reference. So here I have a constructor. And then when the in the run method, because it's a thread, right? So it should have the run method. So threads will execute run method only. So in the run method, I am actually calling print table. Okay, I'm actually calling the print table method here. Okay, this is just like the book, booking ticket example I, I, to, I told you, right? So if at all you want to write a book ticket method, you have to write like this. So you define the book ticket method and you create the threads, you want 1000 threads, let's have 1000 threads created. And in each thread, you, you actually in the run method call the book ticket method. So here I have two threads, two thread wants to print the tables. One thread wants to print 19th table, another thread wants to print uh, 17th table actually. Okay, so in the run method, I'm calling this. And I have another thread that is called second, extend the thread and it has a table reference and there's a constructor and in the run method, I am calling the 17th table. Okay, so this table.java has three Java uh, classes, table, that is my business class. And I have two threads created. See how I have created threads. Class thread extends thread and I have run method and I'm calling this. So this thread wants 19th table and this thread wants 17th table. Okay, and this print table method is defined in another class that is table. So let me now compile. So when you compile, how many dot class file will get generated? When you compile, how many dot class file will get generated? Three dot class files will get generated. So let me see. Okay, so Java C table dot Java. Yeah, so now you can see LS, then you will have table dot. Uh, yeah, so you have table dot class and then you have first and second also will be there. Somewhere here you will have first dot class and somewhere at the end you will have the second dot class. So this of course we know, right? In a source file you can have a number of classes and when you compile all the dot class file you get created. Now, so I need a starting point. So I'm going to sync test. Okay, so this is public class sync test and I have main method. So now first I'm creating the table reference because if at all I have to create uh, a thread, I require thread constructor, right? And thread constructor takes table reference. So now what I'm doing, table t equal to new table. And here 
first uh, t1 equal to new new first of t. So I'm, I'm calling the constructor which takes table reference and t1 dot starts. So when t1 dot start, what happens? The run method of this t1 dot start, the run method of this first class is going to get executed. Run method, run method, there is a call to print table actually. So now print table method is going to get executed and which is actually printing what? 19th table, right? So this is going to print 19th table. And immediately main thread starts t2 and t2 dot starts and t2 actually prints 17th table. So now these two tables, two threads will be acting. These two tables will be acting on the resource. What is my resource here, shareable resource? Print table is my shareable resource. And two threads are acting on it. T1 and T2 are acting on it. And T1 wants 19th table and T2 wants 17th table. So now let me actually uh, just go to sync test and uh, let me compile this. Java C sync test dot Java. It's compiled. It's compiled. So whenever I actually run this Java sync test, so what is going to happen? So two threads T1 and T2 will be accessing that shareable resource print table and both will be printing the tables actually. And here in the print table, every thread has to sleep for 500 milliseconds. So whatever the thread goes that goes first, whatever the thread that goes first, what happens that actually prints uh, first line. So 17 into 1, 7, 17, and then it goes for the slip. Now the second thread will come. It also print, it goes for the slip. Uniform access will be there, right? So now you can actually see the tables are getting printed like this, 17, 1, 19, 17, 2, 19, 2, like that. Okay, so do th these two threads are actually printing these tables. So for example, you want one more thread. You want one more thread. What you do is, just copy this, just copy this and paste over here. Let's say this is my third, class third, extends thread and my constructor should be third, right? And what table you want? Let's say you want 18th table. What 18th table? That's it, done. So now let me actually compile this table.java. Now I will have another thread that is third dot class also. Now, now I will go to my sync test. In the sync test, now you can actually see, and we have only two threads, right? Let me create the third thread. So third T3 equal to a new third. Right, and I can say T3 dot start. So when I say T3 dot start, which table it is printing? It starts printing the 18th table. That's it. That's it. Let me actually now compile this sync test. Now you are going to see. Oh, sorry. So new thread, new third, which actually takes a table reference, right? I forgot to give the table reference because my constructor has a table reference in it. Yeah. So it now gets compiled without any issue. Yeah, done. And let me run now. When you run, now you will have 19 table, 17 table, 18 table, all the three three tables getting printed. But you can see uh, there is no order there is no order right so now first what is happening 19th is getting printed then 18 then 17 then 19 then 18 so you should not we could not able to understand there is a thread interference interference here right so one thread is executing other thread comes other thread comes it will print right so there is no order there is no order actually so now what i want to do is i want to achieve the order i want to achieve the order. i want to achieve the synchronization Okay, I want to control the acts of threads to a shared resource. What is a shared resource? Print table method. Now I want to achieve that order. So I need not to do anything here in Java. Just we need to use the synchronized keyword actually. So public, so modifiers can come in any order. So now I'm just using this particular synchronized keyword. Public synchronized void print table. That's it. So now what happens? Now what happens, since this printable resource is a synchronized one, now the threads need to obtain the lock first. To whichever the thread that goes first, whichever the thread that goes first, that has to obtain the lock first. Okay, so one thread goes inside, 
it obtains the lock and even though it is sleeping other threads will not come other threads will not be given the permission to execute the critical section because lock is not available for them so till this lock is released by the thread that is executing all other threads have to wait when it finishes its job then only the lock is released then out of the two waiting threads one thread will get it other thread has to wait so that's what actually is going to happen when you say synchronized so internally that locking protocol is uh, being implemented a thread has to achieve a thread has to get the lock and it it actually locks and goes inside okay no other thread can come only after finishing it it releases the lock because its job is done the other thread will take it right so that is specified with the synchronized keyword now let me actually uh, compile everything and show you that this is going to now achieve the order okay let me let me compile this yeah it's compiled now java see sync test java let me compile this main class as well the main class i have three threads now yeah it's compiled let me run now now let's see the magic actually so now 19th table means which thread has gone first the thread t1 has gone first and it acquired the a lock and it is completing its job after that the thread 3 has acquired the lock t3 has acquired the lock and it is finishing its job and then finally the lock is acquired by t2 right so now you can actually see clearly 19th table 18th table and 17th table earlier is all mixed actually so thread interference was there earlier but here we are achieving the order of course you want synchronization you have to compromise on performance because it is actually doing one after other right because i want order especially whenever i am doing any transaction management so i need to achieve the order see whenever i do a withdraw money i need to finish all the task related to that a deposit money also all in between nobody should come and disturb right thread interference is not required over there so consistency is more important so now you have to see where consistency is required okay then you can actually make synchronized things when you make synchronized then it's going to be uh, in order so the threads are going to get executed in order so there will not be any interference just now you can actually see here all the tables got printed one after other so this is about achieving synchronization so here what i did i have a business class and i have three threads created so if you want n number of threads created you just create them whatever the threads you want you just create them and in the main method just create those objects and just start just start t1 dot start t2 dot start so automatically whatever the run method you have written so that is going to get executed right so now threads will interfere but synchronized keyword is there they will achieve the order actually so that's about synchronization so let me tell you about uh, tell you one more example so here this example is interesting very interesting and you can actually use this notation whenever you want to now i have a class called display i have a class called display and i have two methods first method is print capitals and i have another method that is actually printing uh, smaller so printing small a to z and it is printing capital a to z what is the logic to print capital a to z i equal to 65 i less than 90 i plus plus i am printing correct equivalent of the i and each thread is actually getting sleeping for 500 milliseconds so i want to give uniform access that's why sleep method now here print smaller i am starting from 97 and going up to 122 smaller characters are going to get printed right so now here i should not use print method i should use print uh, just to print method not print ln so after every character i have a space actually that is getting printed so here also space is getting printed so in fact you want print system not out at printl and we can do that also okay so no problem as of now yeah so this is my business class so let me compile and uh, see that it has no errors so now let's say java c a display display dot java
Okay, so there are no errors. I have two methods. Now what I want to do is I want to create two threads. One thread should print capitals, another thread print smaller. So that should happen parallelly because that is multi-threading, right? Later I want to ensure the order. So now I have a business class with two methods. Few threads will call print capitals and few threads will call print smaller. So now for that, I am actually going to a class called sync demo. So public class sync demo, publish static void main. So display D equal to new display. Now I need to create threads actually. For example, if there are no threads, I can just create uh, display D, D dot. Uh, I can call these methods, right? D dot print capitals and D dot print smaller. I will get, but I want in a multi-threaded environment. Okay, so for that, what I require, I require thread classes. I require thread classes. Now I have to create thread classes. So how do I create the thread classes? Okay, so like this, we need to create thread classes. Okay, this is one option, but you can also create thread classes in other way. That is with uh, the help of anonymous inner classes. So this is uh, most uh, popular way of writing threads, anonymous inner classes. What we do is we'll create anonymous inner classes and uh, for creation of threads and we will call those methods actually. Okay, so now let's understand. See, you can do this way. You can write thread one, thread two, thread three, and number of threads you can do, but instead of doing writing those many classes, you can all you can use always anonymous inner classes. You know, anonymous inner classes are nameless classes which are defined inside a method. Now, inside a method, the main method, I'm going to define that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is, yeah, so anonymous inner classes, and these anonymous inner classes are threads, right? So that means what? They need to extend thread class. So now what I do is thread t1 equal to, new thread, new thread. So here I am defining the anonymous inner class. So you know, anonymous inner classes combines the process of instantiation and the definition, right? So thread t1 equal to new thread. I am not instantiating here. I'm instantiating a class, which I'm going to define over here. Okay, so this is the syntax for anonymous inner class, right? And what I'm doing here, thread t1 equal to new thread. So I'm, I'm actually writing anonymous inner class over here. And I'm instantiating it and that is getting referred with T1. So here my anonymous inner class uh, should what it has to do. So my anonymous inner class by default extending this thread class so that the object will become threads. And since it is extending thread class, it has to override the run method, right? So let's write the public void run method, public void run. And here in the run method, now what you want to do, so you want uh, call which method print capitals or print smaller so let's say print capitals actually i just say d dot where is the print capitals method print capitals method is there in the display class right and i can actually call that with the help of this object d that's it i am done okay so immediately what i do i will actually say t1 dot start T1 dot start. So it starts printing capitals, start printing A to Z, right? So now I want to create one more anonymous inner class. I want to create one more anonymous inner class. Yeah, so this is thread T2 equal to new thread and public void run and here D dot print smaller. I have a method called print smaller. Let me check actually here. Yeah, so print smaller is a method. So I'm calling d dot print smaller. So it prints what? It's printing small a to z actually. So when it will print immediately after, I say t2 dot start, right? So here what I'm doing, I'm not writing separate thread classes like previous example. I'm creating anonymous inner classes. And this is the anonymous inner class, right? It has a run method. It is calling print capitals method and it's got instantiated and referred by its parent type that is thread. Right. And it was started when it started, its run method is going to get executed. Right. In the run method, we have print capital. So this print capitals is going to get executed. Now you can actually see here. Uh, here thread T2. Now what's happening? Uh, it's also getting created and then T2 dot start it prints smaller numbers. Now let me compile this. 
so this is actually clever way of writing thread classes okay intelligent way of writing uh, defining thread classes and using them using anonymous inner classes so let me compile compile this sync demo dot java it's compiled successfully there is no problem and then when i say sync demo when i say sync demo now you can actually see yeah so small EAs are getting printed then capital a is getting printed some interleaving is happening right i'm printing in horizontally with the giving space actually so small a started capital a b right some interleaved output is coming up some interleaved output is coming up right it's actually not not printing small a is first or capital a is first some interleaving was there so i could not able to understand what is the output so now i want order i want order to be achieved so what i do i just go here to my print capitals whoever accessing this whoever accessing this they must follow the order i go to print smaller whoever accessing this i want order right so when in the run method this print capitals is getting executed the other one will not come and when it is getting executed the other one will not come so synchronization will achieve you the order let's see here so now let me compile sync demo and now you can see that whichever thread that goes first will print actually so now the thread the first thread has gone first t1 has gone first and it is printing all the capital letters this is the order even though it is sleeping the other thread is not coming inside so only after it prints then a uh, small letter small letters are getting printed actually right this is synchronization so ensuring the order or preventing the thread interference like that so but here what i did is so what i did here is i have not created thread classes just like how i have created so to reduce the number of lines what i did is i am using the anonymous inner classes so this is how anonymous inner class is written and it is called actually okay and uh, of course you don't if you if at all you want uh, no reference is not required then immediately you can actually say dot start here object creates anonymously and it can start also that's also possible that's also possible anonymous inner class can have anonymous objects also so directly you need to start it because you don't have reference you need to start it okay so this is about synchronization and if at all you want to make this example so whatever i have created right these things anonymous you can also create anonymous here instead of saying first t1 equal to new first you can actually create anonymous inner class for this this and this just like I how i have created okay so you can also create anonymous inner classes over there and then you can avoid writing all these classes okay so this is about uh, synchronization in java so synchronization is to control the access to shared resources by multiple threads right so when you say synchronized then there will be a locking protocol being implemented only one thread at a time can get the lock and it finishes its job and then other thread will be given the access right so of course it uh, hinders the performance but whenever there is a need for consistency okay then you have to go for it so examples like transaction management whenever you are doing a transaction a transaction is actually set of instructions whenever you are doing a transaction it should not be interfered it should fully done or it should be none none or done so that's the principle of transaction so that case you must have to have synchronization and how you are going to achieve synchronization with the synchronized keyword so you make the resource as synchronized so here i have two synchronized resources and here i have one action and here uh, the threads you can create like this or you can also create anonymous in classes as to do it and yeah so this is about synchronization in the next session we will be we are going to see inter uh, thread communication there also i will be using anonymous in our classes okay so so that's all for this session hope you understand the synchronization and see you in the next session thank you